How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball, another episode of Premier League predictions as international break is in the past and we can focus on the Premier League for at least next four weeks till the next yeah. international <laughs> break comes up. But uh, yeah, big games happening this week and you're getting an episode a day early because we've got some big North London derby content coming up on We Are Tottenham TV. Um, as you can see on the top corner of your screen, it's 29 points to Sim, 34 points to me. And the way the scoring works, it's five points points for a completely correct scoreline, one point for a correct result, and the star man, once you pick that man, you can't pick them again for the rest of the season. It's five points for a goal, two points for an assist, and let's get into the weekend's action. Starting off at St. Mary's it is Southampton, it's Man United. I nearly said the Dell there, uh, <laughs> showing my age a little bit maybe, but uh, Sim jump for 4-1 to Man United. I have. I've gone for a big win. I think it's a kind of perfect game for them against a team who are going to come and attack them, who are only kind of no well, seeing in the first uh, three games of the season, they kind of still stick to their principles ahead of the championship, playing out the back. Um, they've been caught out on a number of occasions the first three games. And I feel like Man United uh, need a big win because they've had a really poor start to the season, two defeats in their first three games. And I think these could be very willing opponents here. Have, I mean, Southampton have played well, but similar to the likes of you know Burnley and Norwich in, in years gone by, um, whether they have the quality to do what they're doing in the Premier League, uh, I think there are question marks mm -hmm. over that. Um, they're, they're performing very well, and like I've seen a lot of the metrics, like possession and all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to results, they've got three losses, and I think Man United are going to inflict more damage on them. The likes of Rashford, um, I think, could be perfect for this game. So I've gone for a 4-1 win to Man United. Yeah, I've just gone for 1-0. Southampton, um, I like what they're about, possession-based football, but they're struggling to get on the score sheet. They've scored one goal, which came as a consolation goal right at the end of their last game against the Brentford. And, you know, I was really impressed with the way they played against Newcastle, um, you know, dominated the possession when it was 11 v 11. And they were unlucky not to be in the lead. And I think Newcastle got away with one, uh, particularly after the red card when they were just uh, pummeling them. They just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And I feel in this game against Man United, they are going to raise their game in front of their home fans. I think Man United might struggle um, a little bit, but... I just can't see Southampton getting the ball in the back of the net and I think Man United will nick one. So I actually see a bit of a close game, but Man United just about nicking it. So I've gone for 1-0, Sim's gone for 4-1. Move on to Brighton against Ipswich. We've both gone for the exact same scoreline here in 3-1 to Brighton. Brighton been one of the most impressive teams so far in the Premier League. Um, New manager Hurst has got them really playing well. They've got they've integrated their new signings. I think Jakuba Minter looks brilliant. Mitoma looks back to uh, his best as well. After I thought he had a bit of a, you know, a bit of an off season last year. So. I'm really liking the look of this Brighton team with Jao Pedro, Danny Welbeck smashing in the goals early doors. Ipswich, um, yeah, I think they've got a good chance to stay up. Um, I like what they're about, but I just feel like Brighton are just going to have a way too much for Ipswich. I think they can get a goal, but I think it will be convincing by the end of it. Yeah, I agree. I think I see Brighton dominating. I think Ipswich, uh, you know, I've seen them in their first three games. They do, again, similar, similar to Hampton, but probably with a bit more quality, like to keep the ball. They they like to, again, sticking to their principles uh, against the likes of Liverpool. They were giving them some trouble before Liverpool turned it on. Um, they got a draw against Fulham last time out. Credible draw, but, you know, they probably could have you probably wanted a better a result in that one. Brighton have been super impressive in their first three games and they've got just so much so much wealth of attacking talent in their team. You know, they've got a forty million pound rutter who's probably not even going to start in this game. They've um they've got so many uh, attackers. I just see them overwhelming Ipswich in this one and I think they're just gonna come out three one winners. How mad is it like if I said to you ten years ago, in ten years Brighton are going to be, uh, you know, spending the most out of any team in Europe in a transfer window. Like you would have been like, what? Shows exactly shows how well run they are. Tony yeah. Bloom's had a marvelous job, and it's all come down to recruitment. So yeah. signing players like Kaiseida for cheap, selling him for a hundred million, and reinvesting it, and it's a really good model for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up, Crystal Palace against Leicester. Both of us gone for Crystal Palace wins. I've gone for two one. Sims gone for two nil. Yeah, I think with their three at the back system, I think they should have enough to keep out a Leicester side who are still relying on, a, on an aging Vardy, who obviously gave Tottenham some trouble. But I feel like against three defenders, he's going to struggle to get him behind and find that space Leicester um, in the start of the season obviously got that point against Tottenham but of, it's followed by uh, two defeats I still haven't been that impressed with them uh, in, in the two games that they've uh, lost against uh, Aston Villa against Fulham I thought against Aston Villa the scoreline flattered them a bit they were, they were kind of out of sight before they had a late rally with 10 minutes to go and I think 
Palace as well haven't won yet this season, but there are signs of potentially them getting their act together against Chelsea, albeit a bit fortunate to get the point in the end, but Eze showed his quality with a brilliant goal. And I feel like in this game, the way Glasner sets up is perfect to kind of um, make the most out of uh, their attacking talent going forward in this kind of game. And I think they should be able to keep Leicester out and keep a clean sheet. So I've gone for a 2-0 into Palace. Yeah, I've gone for 2-1. Uh, it's two teams who I haven't really been impressed with this year. And on the back of what Oli Glasner did for Palace last season, I was expecting quite a bit in these early parts of the season for Crystal Palace. It hasn't really materialised as of yet Leicester um, I think they're going straight back down I think they've got a points uh, deduction coming as well at some point during the season I've not been impressed with them well, they it, got overturned or they has that been overturned has it they had an appeal that's it. successful successful already yeah. so it's not coming well at the moment it's not yeah oh wow I didn't know that mm. so well that's that but I still think they're going to go down to be honest I, I, don't, I just don't think they have the quality to stay in, in the middle to stay up in the in the league they've got a midfield two of Winks and Skip is that going to be good enough to really uh, keep them in the league I don't know I question it but in this game specifically I think Leicester have actually found a goal in each of their games so far this season I think they can find a goal but I don't see this being like a, a great game of football for the neutral. But I think Palace will just about get over the line here with a 2-1 win. Next up is Fulham against West Ham. Sims gone for a Fulham win here, 2-1. I've gone for 1-1 in this game. I think both of these teams have the uh, potential just to cancel each other out. I feel like now the international break has come and gone. I feel like West Ham might be integrating these new signings. I, I don't think Tadebo has played yet, has he, for, uh, for West Ham? He's been on the bench, I think. All That's what I'm games. saying. Like yeah. It's madness. They're... they're um, they're they're going for Mavropanos instead of Tadeb like, yeah. <laughs> in the first three games. I'm like, what are you doing? But I think um, I think he will start integrating these new signings now. I think it might take a bit of time for them to settle in, and that's why I thought just throw him in from the beginning so it gives them more settling in period. Now he's waiting them on the bench, and they got to be in the first team. They got to acclimatize and all that. So. I feel like it's going to be two teams that fancy their chances and I just feel like they might cancel each other out. I've gone for a 2-1 win to Fulham. I think at Craven Cottage, they're always a tough. it's always a tough place to go. I feel like West Ham are still feeling their way into the season. Uh, they've had a tough start, but um, I feel like in this kind of game, as they haven't got all their signings integrated, Fulcrug's now picked up a, a, a bad injury, so he's probably going to be out for the next month or so. Um, I feel like Fulham are just a bit more settled at the moment with, the, with their team, um, adding Smith Rowe, who's had a pretty decent start to life at Fulham. Uh, I just feel like at Craven Cottage, the, with the home crowd behind them, London Derby, I think they're going to sneak it 2-1. All right, let's move on to Anfield. Liverpool against Nottingham Forest. Sims gone for 3-0. I have gone for 4-0. Yeah, I can't see anything but a Liverpool win. I was really impressed with how they just took Man United apart at Old Trafford. I really thought that was going to be a bit more of a difficult game for them. But Arnie Slot really showing his uh, credentials so far. Three wins, the only team in the league not to have conceded a goal as well. He's really bringing the best out of Trent uh, again, who had a you know maybe not his best season last season, and he's back to his best, it seems, this season. He seems to have found a new level of Diaz, who seems to be getting goals regularly now. Um, he's got a new uh, role for Shobberslai, who seems to be mm. um, uh, really doing well at the start of the season. And I think Forrest, to be fair, also unbeaten, two draws and a win, and they've made a good start to the season. But I just can't see them holding out Liverpool. I think they're going to overwhelm them. I think it's going to be too much for Forrest to handle. And the way Forrest play... Look, they got talent, they got Gibbs White, they got Alanga, they got Wood all in good form. But I just think the way Liverpool are playing at the moment, um, I can't see anything, especially at Anfield, done a resounding win to Liverpool. So 3 0. Yeah, I completely agree. I've just gone for one more in, in 4 0. I think the way Arnie Slot has started the season with Liverpool has been sensational. Haven't conceded a goal yet. And um, they're scoring goals for fun as well. And I think um, Nottingham Forest, who have started the season well in their own right, I think um, I, I can't see them walking away with anything um, at, in this game against Liverpool. And I think it's going to be a yet another clean sheet uh, for Liverpool this weekend at Anfield. So let's move on to Manchester City against Brentford. Sims gone for 2-0. I have gone for 3-1 to Man City. I think Man City's quality will obviously shine through in this game. Erling Haaland has scored seven goals, which is more than any other Premier League team this season, which is an absolutely mad stat after three games. And Man City have started the season on fire. They they look unbeatable at the moment, and I feel another three points is coming their way. But I just feel like Brentford can get a goal. In their last game, they did look a bit susceptible to the counter-attack, and um, Brentford got the perfect players uh, to counter on them as well, where you're looking at Embuemo, Wissa and Sade, they are looking really good on the counter-attack so far in the first three games. So I think 
think they can get a bit of joy there, but Man City will win the game. Yeah, I've gone for a 2-0 win. Brentford always seem to give Man City a game. Always seem to be a tough game for Man City when they come up against Brentford. So... I do think um, I do see Man City maybe for large parts getting a bit frustrated, but I just think they've got too much quality. They'll open, they'll unlock the door one way, one way or another. Whether Foden's back for this game, I'm not sure, but he'll be the perfect kind of player um, to bring back in this game when. Um Brentford are kind of playing their low block. They're relying on set pieces. I think Man City have this kind of a bit more, I'm not saying pragmatic, but they've got a bit more controlled um, style about them now. They don't give off as many chances as they used to, I feel. So um, I feel like they'll control the game. They'll limit Brentford, make sure they're not getting those counter attacks. And I just see them having that quality. So I've gone for a 2 0 win to Man City. Next up, Villa Park. It is Aston Villa against <coughs> Everton. Sims gone for three two. You gone for a big one? Big one, yeah. I think in these kind of games, first, first of all, Everton off the back of three defeats, especially being two 0 up against Bournemouth, with in, going into stoppage time and losing three two, a bit the pressure's building a bit on Sean Dyche. I feel, and he needs to get a big performance and a, and he does need a result here. I just feel like uh, with their injuries, they still got still no Branthwaite available for this one. Um, I feel like with Aston Villa at Villa Park they're going to really put it on them they're going to uh, Watkins has had a break over the international break he didn't uh, he decided not to go uh, he's going to be well rested he was getting the chances before the international break but just seemed a bit off but with that maybe a refresh maybe he'll be ready to start scoring goals again so I think Aston Villa will be getting goals in this one I can't I think um, Everton will give them control I think that Villa are going to play that high line but I can see Everton hurting Villa in this one I think they played really well against Bournemouth for a lot, a lot of that game game against a side who play similar way to Aston Villa and they did get quite a bit of joy and uh, Villa do have a tendency in these kind of games to give the opposition a bit too much uh, control and allow them uh, into the game and I can see them allowing Everton into this one I can see Everton hurting them from set pieces and counter attacks as well um, and I also the high press I think when Villa try and play out the back I think Everton's high press can be good uh, on occasion so I do see them getting joy but I just can't see them getting any points I think it's going to be a lot of goals but I've gone for Villa to shade at 3-2. Yeah, Everton have probably been the most disappointing team so far this season. Um, they've been, I mean, that game against Bournemouth, like that's got to knock the stuffing out of you being 2-0 up till so late in the game. 87th minute was the first goal for Bournemouth. They ended up losing the game 3-2. So I, I got they're going to come into this really low on confidence and I feel like Villa are going to reap the benefits of that. I can even see maybe Everton even taking the lead early and just Villa coming back straight away and, and you know, wiping the floor with them. So... Um, Villa have started the season fairly well. Uh, the game that they did lose against Arsenal, I think they did deserve more out of the game. So I just can't see anything but a resounding Villa win here. I really can't. And I think maybe the goal that Everton will get maybe a set piece or something. And you know who's been the most impressive for me so far for Villa is Onana. I think he's been mm. brilliant. Two goals already. <laughs> Probably more than he ever scored for Everton. Probably, yeah. And he's, so. he's going to score against his old club. Watch. Wouldn't be surprised. Is that is your star man? And no, Onana. <laughs> no spoilers. Um, let's go to Bournemouth against Chelsea. I have gone for 2-2 two, two here. Sim's gone for 2-1. Well, this is going to be a battle for possession in this game. Bournemouth like to control the possession. Chelsea like to control the possession. And I feel like you're going to see a really open game of football with a lot of goals flying in. Um, again, I think both of these teams will really fancy their chances. Chelsea um, maybe starting to get into the groove a little bit. And Bournemouth with a really confidence, morale-boosting win against Everton three goals in the last minute so I think you're going to see two teams really fancying their chances and um, splitting the difference yeah I think away from home Chelsea uh, obviously their last game away from was against Wolves they absolutely uh, routed them 6-2 they got so much attacking talent uh, Chelsea I, I think it's going to be hard for Bournemouth to contain it Bournemouth obviously a very good side they've start the season unbeaten with two draws and a win um, and I think they're playing really well obviously brilliant win against Everton when they were 2-0 down and in their own right they, you know Semenyo's had a brilliant start to the season he looks electric at the moment I just feel like Evan Nilsson I've seen him the first, first couple of games he's still getting acclimatised to the Premier League and whether maybe he misses a few chances and that costs, costs Bournemouth in this one so I've just gone for a 2-1 win to Chelsea just for them to sneak it here all right, and now it is a small matter of the North London derby. Tottenham against Arsenal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And what have we predicted? Well, the reverse of the Chelsea game. Sim's gone for 2-2 two, two, and I've gone for 2-1. Yeah, I think obviously the injuries to Arsenal, Odegaard, Rice being out, that's going to be a big blow to them in terms of them having control and them being as effective as they could be in this game. But 
don't get it twisted. They've still got Partey coming in. They've got um, an experienced midfield. They can drop Havertz into midfield. They've got Raheem Sterling to come in, who can potentially make his debut. He'll want to make an impact in this game as well. He loves and, a goal uh, against us and as well. And against our high line, you know, um, it's, it's a... It's a potential where uh, he could definitely hurt us so and from set pieces I know we've improved from set pieces so far this season but Arsenal's still very reliant on that and that's still an avenue they can hurt us but Spurs I think last season I know we only picked up one point in two games but we played very well in both those games I thought against Arsenal and I think we definitely have the tools to take the game to them uh, really cause them a lot of trouble Solanke's back uh, hopefully hopefully van der ven is back for spurs as well those are going to be two major boosts for the um for the lineup and i think that could go a long way for spurs getting something out of this game i just not convinced i'm not 100 i think we can win i definitely think we can win but i just got a feeling it's still going to be a desmond so i've gone for two two yeah, I've, I've, I've put my balls on the line. 2-1 to Spurs in the North London derby. A win against Arsenal has been a long time coming. I don't, We haven't beaten them for two seasons now. And um, yeah, it's getting really frustrating playing them a lot. And with those injuries, with Odegaard and Rice, I mean, if you could have asked me of two players uh, for them uh, to be missing in this game, for us to get the upper hand, I think I would have picked those two players. I think they miss a lot of legs in midfield without Odegaard and Rice. And I feel if they're going to play Jorginho and Partey, I feel like we can overrun them a little bit in midfield um, with the legs that we do have there, you know, Saar, Bentank or Basuma, whichever ones that uh, Ange goes for on the day. And yeah, look, Arsenal are still going to carry their own threats from set pieces, like you say, and um, the counter-attack for sure. But I just feel like with the fans behind us, it's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere in that stadium. Um, I just feel like Spurs can just about get over the line against a very good Arsenal side, who actually haven't started the season that well. Points and, and uh, points will tell you, yes, they have started the season well, and uh, but performances, I don't think they've been that good so far this season. So I actually think from a performance level, Spurs have actually been better than Arsenal this do, season. Do you not think he'll start Deke Madders in this one, in the middle? Um... <laughs> I don't know. But even if he does start Deki and Madders, I still think we're going to have the legs yeah, over them. I want him to start Deki and Madders, yeah. especially with those injuries. I think you've got to take the game to them. Yeah, but I think like regardless of whether it's Deki, Madders, Saul, whoever it is, we're still going to take the game to them. We're still mm. going to try. And I think we will dominate the possession. And I feel Arsenal are going to sit back and wait for those counter-attack moments. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way they're going to play the game out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I envisage us having probably over 65% possession in this game. Mm. Yeah, like we did last time. Exactly. So I think they'll they'll set up in a similar way, but I just feel like we can pummel them a bit in midfield, but we just need to be wary of those counter-attacks. And if mm -hmm. we can stop that with Mickey van der Ven, let's just hope he's back because he's going to be crucial in this game if... Um, if he is back. So, touch wood, Mickey van der Ven starts. If Mickey, van, if Mickey doesn't play, I do worry for us a little bit, uh, um, a bit more than I am now, but I'm assuming that that uh, Solanke and Van de Ven will be fit for this game. And it's going to be more or less a full-strength Spurs side against an injury-ravaged Arsenal side. So if we don't win this game, when are we ever going to beat them? Well, we've lost, we've lost games against injury-ravaged teams before. <laughs> I, so know, I know. I wouldn't count your chickens. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But anyway, Wolves against Newcastle. Both gone through the exact same scoreline here in 1-1. Haven't been impressed with Newcastle whatsoever this season. I thought the game that they beat Spurs in, they were lucky to get over the line with three points. And um, I think they've been poor in pretty much every game. It seems like there's a bit of trouble at the top as well. Eddie Howe and Mitchell uh, seem to be coming under a few disagreements. Wolves as well. Um, I just feel like Wolves are going to be strong at the Molyneux and um, and just about get away with a point. Yeah, I see a close game. I see a game of few chances. I think Wolves haven't started the season that well. One point in the first three games. Um, albeit they put a good performance in against Arsenal, but the other two, the draw against Forest, they scored a goal from out of nothing and didn't really create too much other than that. Um, and then they obviously got bad 6-2 against Chelsea. Well, but to be fair, in that game, Definitely hurt Chelsea in that first half, and they were playing well, but they completely collapsed in that second half. Uh, Newcastle, I think, got away with one a bit against Spurs. They got lucky to to get a win, let alone well, even a point would have been lucky. But they got they got their th three points, and uh, I think performance-wise, they just look a bit lackluster. You know, you associate Eddie Howe teams with high pressing, aggressive uh, aggressiveness. Haven't seen that yet from uh, this Eddie Howe team. And against this Wolf side, you're going to need that to get all three points. So I think it's going to be a 1-1 one, one draw. All right. And now it is the star men. Sim has gone for Eberechi Eze at home Eze. to Leicester. Yeah, I think obviously got his goal against uh, Chelsea. Brilliant goal. Um, I think Should have had a goal the week before as well with the free kick. Against Brentford. And I think in the first week against West Ham, 
or the second week, wherever it was, um, he had the most shots that weekend without uh, and didn't score. Although I think he hit the bar and stuff, so he's actually been playing really well. And uh, obviously, it's come off from against Chelsea, so I think now he's broken his duck. He'll hit a bit of form. So I've gone for Eze against Leicester. And I have gone for Luis Diaz at home to Nottingham Forest. I think Diaz has been brilliant so far this season. Already got a couple of goals to his name. And I think, um, you know, I predicted 4-0 to Liverpool. And I think he's going to be central to that. Goals, assists, hopefully in there as well. So uh, Luis Diaz against Eberechi Eze. Let me know your score lines in the comments section below. Let me know who you think is going to come out on top this week as well. Me against Sim. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll see you next time.